Hello, my blessed ones. It's Tania. I'm back with another word. But more importantly, God wants me to speak about family. He wants me to get straight to the point on how people who follow him, follow the Lord and love the Lord so much dearly. We have no support from our family. And I used to question God a lot. Like, why is it that I don't have a no support or no type of nothing with my family? God said, because I am your family. I am going to be the one guiding you. Your family does not have it they don't have the support to give you like i do and i said well god like why why was i brought up in this family is it because of the things that i've done is it because i ran away at 15 years old and my family has looked at me kind of weird as the black sheep is it because of the decisions that i made in my life what is it is it me god god said listen it was gonna be like that anyway i put you in a family where i knew you wasn't gonna have support i knew what they wasn't gonna allow I knew that they were going to look at you some type of way when you did this, that, and the third. But guess what? You have a testimony. God said you have a testimony. And God wanted me to speak to everyone who is going through something with their family. Your family is not there for you at all. And it's not your fault. Because family is supposed to be together no matter what. But, but, God made it that way. God made it that way. And how do I know? I know 100% for sure because me, myself, I changed my whole life. I used to be one way. I changed my life. I realized that my family looks at me how I used to be. And that's the problem. They look at you how they know you to be. They don't know you to be a man or a woman of God. They don't know you to be a changed soul. They don't know you to be saved. They don't know you to be chosen. They don't know you like that. They know you from what they know about you, that you're just their daughter, their son, their niece, nephew, their grandchild, and that's it. Their cousin, that's it. They don't look at you like how God looks at you. They didn't know God was gonna use you for your testimony to tell people what God did for you. They don't know that. See, my family, they judge me because of the decisions that I made a long time ago. They judge me from the friends that I've had or that I have. They judge me from the residue from what the devil did to me. From what I allowed the devil to do. Unknowingly, knowingly. They judge me from what they see. They don't see what's in the inside. They don't see what's in my mind. They don't see what's in my heart. Just like your family. Your family does not know the nights that you cry out to God and ask God why. And God, change me. And God, I want you. And God, I love you. You know why? Because I ask God this question. Because they don't have the capacity to do it. They think as far as them and their problems in their life. That's all they think about. So when I was writing to God, I said, God, why is it that? my family do me like this God said everything you lost you shall receive it the hope the faith the friends the family family will not support you because they are tired of all of your attacks our family gets tired of all of the things that we go through they're tired of hearing oh again you oh it's always something oh I just don't know what to do your family is sitting watching your life watching your whole life unfold and they don't want to help you because they feel like it's too much they like you got too much going on and there's no way that i can help you you got to figure it out on your own you're grown or you got yourself into that so you got to get yourself out that's family that's how family is right people are selfish says the lord people are selfish they don't care about the next person and how they feel. They care about their life, and that's it. That's the reason why they can't help you. They look at you like you're a problem. God doesn't look at you like that. God looks at you like whatever problem you have, I'm going to solve it. Just come to me so that we can work it out together because I knew you wasn't going to have the support from your family. <laughs> your family thinks because they are family, they know you. And since they think that they know you, they're like, it's the same old you. You ain't changed. Your family is the accuser, just like the devil. Your family does not care about what you got going on because it does not benefit them. Now, let's say you was doing real good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, family. Come on, let's go. Let's have a good life together. Let's do this together. I'm going to be here. I'm going to ride it till the wheels fall off. 
But the minute you have a problem, they don't want nothing to do with you. They judge you like no other, knowing that you are that they are all you got. They know that. They know that you depend on them and that you want their love, but they don't have it to give to you, says the Lord. I have all the love to give to you. God has all the love to give to you. God knew exactly that you were going to go through this and that the only person that you could call and depend on was God. So please don't feel no type of way the fact that you have to call out to God. It may seem like it's taking long, but guess what? Day by day, lay that brick and that brick wall will be made. But don't don't miss a day. Don't miss a day because you need that. You need that day. I could just cry right now knowing that my family does not want anything to do with me. There's not one family member that I could call right now and say, hey, can you help me? They're going to say, we helped you before. Can you help me again? No, we can't do that. You got, you got all them kids. You got too much going on. Rejection. Abandonment. Betrayal. But. Instead of me crying. I pray to God. So God what's next? So God what do I do? You think God don't send nobody to us? Yes, he does. Even if that person is a creep. Even if that person is another homeless man. Even if that person is weird. Go see the blessing that God got for you with these people. Because your family ain't there for you. Your family will not only leave you out for the streets. But they will also judge the decisions that you make. Well, how come you didn't help me, family? How come you didn't help me, mom? How come when I came over, you said that you wanted to help me, but then you looked down on me? How come? How come you compare my life to your life? Everybody is not going to be the same. My mom, she has a problem with me, I know. Because when I ran away at 15, I wanted to get away from her because I didn't like how she was letting her husband treat her. I was young. But when I was away from her, I would always say, God, I want our relationship to be so good. God, I want you to change my mom. My mom never really changed, but just a little bit. But God made her change a little bit because she seen how I felt. And she didn't want her other kids to do her how I did her, which was run away. Or feel like how I felt to her. So I see that with my brothers. She loves their dirty draws. They can do no wrong. And she does not want to mess up with them. But with me, she's not trying to rekindle no type of relationship at all. I'm always the one being the bigger person, reaching out to her first. She doesn't call me. I just I just had a birthday, November 19th. She didn't call me. But her birthday was November 23rd. I tell her happy birthday. She don't tell me happy birthday. I tell her I love her first. She does not say anything take that my battery was going low she doesn't do the things that I do to her she that's how she's always been and I used to cry to her and say mom is it because I ran away stop saying that to Nia I'm over that and if you believe in God to Nia you should know that you've been forgiven I'm not holding no grudge I want to get my blessings so I start saying that like I'm never holding a grudge because I don't want to not get my blessings I learned that from her when you ask my mom about, you know, and this is not just about my mom, my whole family, they all act like this. My grandmother used to be my dog. Hmm. Now, oh, you couldn't pay her to act how she used to act. And then when I start talking about God, she's like, okay, okay, okay. Don't get all sanctified on me. Nobody was happy when I changed my life. When I said I got God, they said, do you? Do you really got God? Nobody believes me. Nobody believes in me. They never have. With my kids, with my singing career, with me just period, they look at me like I'm just a joke. But the way God has blessed me and the way God set me up, how come God don't look at me like that? God is for us. Family is not. So I want to go into scripture, right? Matthew 8, verse 20. 
to 21. It says, and Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air has nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. The son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Don't nobody really accept the son of man. Just like they didn't accept Jesus in his hometown. They don't accept us, the people that speak the truth. And I'm no perfect person because I'm speaking the truth. But how come when things get real, nobody in our family wants to hear it? But all the negative stuff, they could talk about that all day. To down talk us and to bad mouth us all day. But the minute we speak the truth, they don't want to hear it. We don't have nowhere to lay our head. Okay? So verse 21, it says... Another one of the disciples said to him, Jesus, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, follow me and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. It is what it is. The family don't accept you. That's all it is to it. It's time to go forward and see what God want for you and see what God got for you and see what God is saying to you because your family ain't saying nothing. They're saying the same old thing. They're putting you down. And I always wonder, why do my family treat me like this? I come around. They don't want to hear no good news. Oh, my God, I just met this person. They said this. Oh, I'm working with this person. You know, I'm doing these good things. My family is like, okay. We live in life over here. We got a nine to five over here. You know, my grandparents is retired now. But for the people with jobs, oh, we go to work, girl. We're not in that fairy tale life that you're talking about. Oh, you too? Oh, are they paying you? Well, no, they're not paying me. God is telling me to do. And what else God is telling you? What do you mean, what else? This is the best thing yet. God is speaking to me. I'm sharing my testimonies. I'm letting God use me. I'm saving lives. I'm uniting, I'm uniting with other people. I'm coming together with other people. I'm... I changed. I'm fellowshipping. I'm prophesying. I'm telling the good news. What God is telling me. I'm talking to God. I changed my life. I don't smoke weed anymore. I don't hang out with the people that I hang out with. You guys still not happy for me after this? Well, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm not even disrespectful. The way God set me up now, I don't even like give nobody a guilt trip or nothing that's why i want to tell you don't even deal with it i called my mom the other day mom i just want to let you know i love you i hope my life turns out how you want it to be i hope you know you're proud to say that you have a daughter like myself i'm gonna be somebody for you mom I'm going to make sure I make a difference. I'm going to make sure that who I was before, I'm not going to be no more. Okay, Tania. And that's it. I love you, Mom. I love you too, Tania. And sometimes she says it so sarcastically, like, okay, girl. All right, girl. Okay, Tania, if that's what you say. Nobody believes you. Nobody cares. But please believe they talking about all your downfalls. They talking about you to the other family members. They talking about you to their friends. Oh, yeah, girl. Tania then got herself into some stuff again. Oh, now her kids acting up. Oh, but she says she forgot. But her life is in shambles. They don't get that your life is in shambles because God wants to use you. How is he going to use you with the perfect life? I, don't, I I never seen God just use somebody with some old perfect life and have him change lives. Never. Not yet. Everybody that I draw towards or who I learn from, they have a testimony. And they show their strength in their testimony. That's why I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. That's why I'm going to continue to encourage people to speak your truth. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because I'm about to start speaking my whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, Lord. Help me, God, because I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it. And it's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Because one thing about it and two things for sure, my mom didn't take me to church. I didn't go to church. I wasn't raised in the church. This is how you know. So you mean to tell me nobody's paying me? I don't get no reward for this. But all I do is sit up on this YouTube 
and I tell my life and I tell the word of God and I talk to you guys and tell you guys what God has put in my mind to talk about and nobody told me to do it that got to be God that's why I encourage everybody who watched this video if you need to start making videos talk to God see what God wants you to do and start being one of his prophets start being one of his evangelists start being one of his servants And see which one of them family members needs you. See how you're going to help them in their life. You may save a life one day. Literally save a life because that's what I had to do. I did CPR on the auntie who didn't even love me. Told me that I was weak and then she dropped to the floor. But that's another testimony. God has been using me since the very first day. It's so many things that I go through that I don't even talk about, talk about on YouTube. I talk about the important things that it's going to be okay and keep on pressing and keep on praying because I'm telling you it's going to get down to the nitty gritty like it's been going down for me right so these little things like this yeah it seems big as we're going through but it's small peanuts we got bigger giants we got bigger Goliaths to take down this is just the start God said, be strong. When you weak, say that you are strong. You hear me. You may seem weak, but you will be strong. And when I say God comes in the instant, because he does. It doesn't seem like it to us. But the minute we pray, he's already working behind the scenes. So like a few days along the line, you'll start to see it. But he instantly start working on you when you started to pray. Instantly. It was already put in the universe already. Angels got to get to go on to work. One angel, two angels, three angels, four. And it will continue. It will continue. Because I've been walking this walk by myself without my family. Matter of fact, I felt good. Okay, now I can talk about my family because I know they're not going to see it anyway. They're not going to look at it anyway. Not to put their dirty laundry out, but to just vent and to just tell my truth and what I'm going through, how I'm feeling and tell God to help me as I'm going through it because he sees it. I didn't do nothing to my family to where they disown me. They just don't like dealing with the attacks that I go through. They don't like dealing with my real life and it's fine. It's fine because God is going to direct me. God is going to send people to me just like he's going to do for you. He is going to help you. He knows who's not helping you. And God wants us to help each other and help one another. So anyway, he's looking at them like, if you're not going to help her or him, I'm going to help her. I'm going to send somebody to her. I'm going to send somebody to him. And he is. Oh, he is. So I just want to just give you guys that encouragement. That God knew that family wasn't going to be family. God knew that they were going to treat you like it wasn't nothing. But that leaves space for God to come and work. So we should be happy that they didn't do it. Because we would want God to do it anyway. We don't want man to do something. They don't even have it all to do it. Sometimes I'm like, you know what? What I'm asking for, they can't give it to me anyway. What I need, they can't give it to me anyway, my family. Like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't raised in the church. But my mom always said, oh, I just went to church. I just listened to Joe Osteen. Oh, I just, you know, I had church in my house. I, but she never shared no video to me. She never invited me to watch church with her. It is what it is. I used to cry a lot about it until God started revealing to me, like, listen, Mothers is going to go against daughters. Sons is going to go against fathers. Family is not going to be family. Half of the people are going to be with the devil. The other half is going to be with God. You're the chosen one. You're not going to be accepted. You're the black sheep for a reason. God started to reveal to me the truth. The truth. And I'm not better than nobody. But he got to use somebody. And why not us? When I say why me, God says why not you? Why not you? Because obviously you're strong enough. Okay? God calls you, but not everybody answered. Obviously you answered. And you wanted me so bad. 
which I do, which we want God so bad. So I made sure I gave it to you. I'm giving you what you want. I'm blessing you how you want to be blessed. I have favor on your life. I allowed those things to happen because it was going to be your testimony later. You are the chosen one. And that's real. That's really real. I used to just think, oh, the chosen one was somebody perfect. No, the chosen one is the one who answers that call and still wants God no matter what happens. We don't want small people. We want big people, which is God. We want our father. We want our creator. That's who we want. And that's who we need. And that's the best thing we could ever have, ever, in this lifetime. So I hope this helps somebody. You are not alone. I'm going through the exact same thing every single day. And if it makes anyone feel better, I will share my life and be transparent because my life is real. So real, you guys. And I only cry because I know God is carrying me. I know he is because remember, my family isn't. So if I didn't have God, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? God sent everybody to me. And he helps me so much. And he knows my heart for him. And he knows ever since I ran away when I was 15 that I've been calling out to him. And he has answered every single one of my prayers. So keep on praying because they're going to keep on getting an answered. Dream big. Pray big. Think big. Because you're going to get it. Don't think small because your family is not supporting you. God got you. I love you guys so much. And God does too. It's going to be okay. I'm going to pray right now. And I just thank you guys for listening to this. Bye.